Good morning, Good everyone. Morning. Welcome to Healing Journeys today. I'm Herman. And I'm Raquel. Thank you so much again for tuning in. Man, you guys have received so much. We've received so much over these past several weeks. Um, Hi, Barbara. <laughs> hey, Barbara. Barbara. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, Lena, um, we're, we are going to give Hi, you guys, guys a few Good minutes morning. to get, get on morning, there. Ladies. Good morning. <clears throat> Hi from Florida. Yeah. Hi, Barbara. Again, <laughs> it, you know, just letting us know where you're from yes. um, really helps us out. Just keep track of, you know, hey, just Nikki. the different areas that we're, we're tapping into. Yep. Hey, Miss Nikki. <laughs> Ochinski Weller. Uh, hey, hey, Nicole, Nicole. Willer. Good to see you, Good to girl. see you from Hawaii. Yes. And Sandy. Yeah. <clears throat> so nice guys, yep. I, we want to just remind you that um, to go to the YouTube channel, Healing Journeys Today. Right. YouTube channel, Healing Journeys Today, and hit the subscribe button. Please. It'll be a little button that says subscribe. Right. That would be the subscribe button. And so <clears throat> important thing to know is that beginning. So for those of you, just to let you know. Obviously, those who are watching on Facebook are familiar with Facebook, but we had gotten so many requests to go live on YouTube because there are people that do not have Facebook and are looking for ways to just easily pull up things on YouTube. Okay, so starting next Sunday, is it Sunday? Yes, the 31st. The 31st. Okay, next, yes it is, it's Sunday. Next Sunday, the 31st, you guys, we will be going live, not on Facebook, but on YouTube. So uh, at 9 a.m. Pacific, which is the time you're watching right now on Facebook, instead of going here to the Facebook page, the Healing Journeys Today page on Facebook, you guys will be going to the Healing Journeys Today YouTube channel. Right where you are, everyone say YouTube <laughs> channel, okay? One more time for YouTube. the people in the back. <laughs> YouTube channel, okay? Healing Journeys Today YouTube channel starting next Sunday. So instead of coming here, you're going to go there. And so what's going to happen is that videos from there, as they're live there, they will be recorded and uploaded later on that day on or later on that day or the next day onto the Facebook Healing Journeys Today page. So where you're watching here will not be live. This will be a recording that was done on YouTube, a live recording on YouTube that is put onto the Facebook channel, okay? Yeah. Or the Facebook um, page. Mm -hmm. So subscribe, 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 share, okay? And then when you're subscribed to YouTube, you're gonna receive notifications when we go live. So just like you receive notifications that we're going live now on Facebook, you're gonna receive that on YouTube, okay? Yes. All right. So um, do that. <laughs> Sorry for that. I don't know if you heard that or not, but yes. sorry for that. Um, and then Sophia is going to be doing her first soaking worship session on Thursday, the 28th, this Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific. So, you know, in addition to all this word that you guys are hearing, which I know you guys are being blessed by not just myself and Herman, but everybody, the whole lineup on this whole um, you keep talking. I got a technical thing I got to take care of. I'll be right back. The whole lineup, you guys, is amazing. And I'm sure you guys have been tuning in. If you haven't, if you've just been listening to Herman and myself, honestly, you're missing out. You're missing out on Nikki, the revelation that, that the Lord has given Nikki, Nicole, Julianne, Mike Hesh, Jeremiah Class, Deborah McDermott. You're missing out on like everybody. <laughs> So you guys should tune in every single day. Look up the information. Um, you can find it here on the Healing Journeys Today page on Facebook right now. Look that up and see what God is doing through each and every person who's yeah. ministering each and every day of the week, okay? But Sophia is going to be doing a soaking worship session. And you guys, I don't know if you've really been paying attention, but the Lord has just put an awesome anointing on her life and on her ministry and it's something that you guys don't want to miss. She's going to go take you into the presence of God. Some of you receive different ways. You hear the word and praise God that nourishes you and that <clears throat> encourages you and that builds you up. But some people need to just get before the presence of the Lord and just let him minister to you. It's not even so much about you ministering to him. It's about what he can do 
to, you know, through you and what he can minister to you when you're just before him in his presence. So Sophia is going to be going, um, I, actually, is it a live? I don't know if it's a live or not, but it's a soaking worship session on Thursday. I'm sure it's live. Yeah. 528 at 4 p.m. Pacific. You don't want to miss that. And follow us on Instagram at Healing Journeys Today. So everything is Healing Journeys Today across all platforms. Okay. Yes. And we'll say this again, but we'll give them the footnotes. The, the shortened version of what, what you just said. Oh, yeah. yeah we'll do it. That yeah. was just the intro. Uh, so, yeah. and, then, <laughs> and then just for today, go Shut ahead. Up. I'm just realizing what he, anyway. <laughs> okay, we'll give you the shortened version. That was right, long. Right, right. And then today for this broadcast, just go ahead and hit your share button on Facebook. You never know who needs what the Spirit of God is going to be communicating. Absolutely. I mean, you just never know. I, you know, I always say I, I remember that that moment where, you know, I, I heard that, you know, just your mom saying, hey, watch Andrew Womack. And I watched and look at us now. Julianne says, yes, changed. it's live. Sophia is going to be live, you guys. You don't want to miss it. It's yes. going to be live worship, yes. 4 p.m. Pacific on Thursday. Yes, yeah. it's live. They, okay, were you ahead. guys intimidated? I think they were intimidated by your thinker. Oh, you were just like, don't Bam. make a point. No, no, you were pointing, <laughs> but I think you probably scared them into watching Sophia. Okay, Even if they well. weren't, now they are. <laughs> so it's all good. So great. So we got that done. We Again, we thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, and so let's get going. Okay. All right. Well, let's just let's just pray real fast. Okay. Just Father, we just thank you for this time, uh, time of sharing, Lord God. We thank you for all the people all over the world who are tuning in, Lord. I just thank you for a softened heart, Lord thank God, you, a fertile Lord. heart and ears to hear, Lord. I thank you that they hear beyond what we're saying, Lord God. That the Holy Spirit is communicating to them and giving birth inside of them uh, with revelation. And so we just thank you that we are only speaking what you would have us speak. And we just thank you for fruit, for fruit, not just thank revelation, but that revelation will go forward and produce fruit in the lives of the hearers. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, man, I'm telling you this whole love thing. Mm. I'm telling you, you guys, if you, haven't been, if you haven't been listening, like if this is your first time uh, watching our broadcast, you got to go back, not just us, go back and listen to everybody, but we've been specifically talking about love and it's the love of God, not our love for God or our love for one another. Right. This is about God's love for us and it has been truly blessing me. And I know every morning now, the first thing that I do when I open my eyes, I say, God, thank you so much for loving me. Amen. Man, thank you for loving me so with the soul love. Amen. Not just any old, the right. soul love. Right. Where you would, where you would sacrifice it. And so I'm just thanking God that he loves me so much. That's kind of crazy, right? It's like, you know, just waking up in the morning and you're like. Well, it's like to start your day off with that revelation right at the center of your yeah. thinking sets the whole trajectory of your day your whole your whole life your whole day your whole future yeah it's like you're looking at it through the lens of his love for you yeah so that's like so you the, can't the perfect lose. way you can't to start lose. your day you we we would you know just think that man i'm gonna wake up and i'm gonna tell god how much i love him you know and and that's great i mean go ahead and bless the lord right. like that but you know what is even more powerful in your own life to have that revelation of his love for you. And so. with that, just really quick, verse John 4, 10 um, says, herein is love. So again, this is, this is according to the Lord. This is inspired by God. This is, this is God's definition of love according to his inspiration. Mm -hmm. It says, herein is love, First John 4, 10, not that we love God, but that he loved us. Yeah. And send his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Yeah. So again, we think, God, I love you and praise God. We love him, but we only love him because he first loved us. That's right. We don't even have the capacity to love him apart from him first loving us. He's a do it first God. Yeah. So he had to love us to show us right. the love that we then turn around and just give back to right. him what he first gave but, to but us. Think about that. How many could be honest enough, including myself? To say, man, I know how much God loves me, and I'm even able to reciprocate that love now. Like, have I really received 
his love. Amen. Because not only loving God, I mean, loving other people. Like, right. you know, the, the Bible says, even my love for you, that husbands are to love their wives like Christ loves right. the church. But if I don't know how much Christ loves the church, I don't even don't know how to... You. You know yeah, how yeah. much he loves well, you. Well, yeah, the, the, I'm part of the church. Right. But yeah, if I don't know how much but God loves personal. me, Christ loves me, right. I don't even have the ability or the capacity to love my wife. That's just, you know, just head blown. So anyway, we're going to start um, off. Raquel, went, we're going to go back into Ephesians, right? Yeah, just we just wanted to recap. And again, if, if you're watching for the first time, we're not going to go through everything all together, but we're just going to kind of recap and build upon it. But we didn't want to rush. You guys may be thinking, for those who have been paying attention and <laughs> following this entire time, you may be thinking, gosh, you're spending a lot of time on something so, like, basic. Well, you know, it's it's basic, but it's more fundamental. It's more foundational. Yeah. And again, we est we've been establishing this whole time that everything is predicated upon the love of God. <clears throat> First Corinthians talks about the love of God, and then at the end it says the greatest of these is love. And we looked up the greatest, the greatest being the first, the, you know, the foremost, the foundational, the elder. They talked about, you know, it's it's the thing that can hold the most weight. And actually, you know what? I actually want to go there. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 13 as I'm talking about it. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And again, what I was going to say was that you may think that this is just so basic. But it is so basic. It's, it's, the, it's the key to understanding everything in the kingdom of God <clears throat> because God is love. That's right. So you're not just kind of understanding, you know, an aspect of of who he is or a personality trait of God. That's right. You're understanding God. That's good. When you understand love. That's true. So you're not understanding just, you know, you know, when we think of God, we think of God is loving. No, God isn't just loving. He is actually love. Yeah. So, so he can't he, help but be loving. He can't help but be loving because he is love. Exactly. It's not something that he does. Yeah. He doesn't love. He is love. Yeah. So from who he is, is who, how he responds to us and treats us and what he does right. flows out of who he is. So one thing that I wanted to point out in 1 Corinthians 13, and I promise I'm not going to read the entire chapter of 1 Corinthians 13, but I encourage you. You're not able to see yeah, anything, I don't think. Okay, perfect. Um, so one thing that it says, I encourage you to go back and read 1 Corinthians 13, but one thing I want to jump over into in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 it says, uh, verse 7, you guys, verse 7, that love bears all things. So love can stand up against anything, okay? It believes all things. So when we first introduced this whole, this whole series on love, we were talking about how believing <clears throat> can only be sustained with a proper understanding of his love for you. Yeah. And how whatever it is you're believing God for, whether it be healing, finances, relationships, whatever it is, that it can only be sustained upon, it can only be rooted and grounded in a revelation of his love for you. So love, the love of God is able to bear everything. Mm -hmm. The love of God is able to believe everything. So again, when we talked about faith becoming easy, when you have a revelation of his love for you, it says that this love believes all things. So faith is easy when you're rooted and grounded in this love yeah. for you. It hopes all things. You won't have a problem with your hope. Many of you have reached out to us and said that you've lost hope. You know, you've been experiencing something for so long. If you were to get a revelation of, this love, of, his, of his love for you, you would hope all things. Because this love hopes all things. Yeah. It can endure all things. Mm -hmm. And it says it never fails. So after the doctors have failed you, after, you know, your body has tried to fail you, yeah. after your mind has tried to fail you, after your relationships, after your husband who walked out on you right in the midst of this diagnosis that you may have had, right in the midst of yeah. everything else having failed you, the love of God for you never fails. It endures everything. So the thing is, is that, 
we we've been to just recap. We're going to go to Ephesians three. Well, well, hang on one second okay. before you go there, because and just to follow up on what uh, Raquel was just saying, why we are just hammering this point is because we've had the message of faith drilled into our hearts, but it what but we we faith alone it doesn't produce results right. faith without being powered by his love it, that's that's the essential ingredient so just think about all the years of faith that i was taught and i'm right. sure you guys were taught and again faith is a good thing but faith alone can't stand by itself right it must have this revelation of love so i'm thinking back of the 30 years of that I've heard the message of faith, right. and I'm thinking, man, I got 30 years. I got to got to catch up with love. So I'm laying that that foundation, mm -hmm. so that when I'm sowing my seed of faith into the ground, that ground is saturated with His love. That is the nutrients mm -hmm. that that helps bring that seed out of the ground. But if that if there's if there are no nutrients in the in the ground, it's like going out into the sand. And just trying to plant a seed in the sand. No, it, it needs soil. Right. If you try to plant in sand, it doesn't work. And so that's what I feel like we've been doing for, for many years is we've been sowing this seed of faith mm -hmm. into the ground and, and we get frustrated because we're not seeing it. And it's not that you haven't sown a seed. It's just that you don't have the right soil. The yeah. texture is not proper. The, the, the nutrients in that soil is not correct. And you know what? I just saw someone that just asked, what does love never fails mean? How do I apply that to my life? Well, for instance, in our lives, the way we're applying that to our lives is we're, we're first of all, we're saying, Lord, you love us. And because you love us, then that means that whatever comes my way, whether it be a diagnosis whether it be a loss, okay, you've got people right now who have lost their jobs, who yeah. need provision, you know, whether it be, it is leaning on and depending on his love and expecting his love to show up to fix the situation. Yeah. Expecting his love for us to show up to fix the situation. So whatever the situation may be, if it's lack, expecting provision to show up it's yeah. it's making a requirement on his love it's like i'm going to the bank because i know i have money in the bank and i'm making a withdrawal because i need twenty dollars so i'm going to the atm machine and i'm putting in my card and i'm making a withdrawal so by faith we make the withdrawal but when we're rooted and grounded in his love for us we can expect that the provision, he said, how will he not with Jesus provide all things, give us all things? I can expect that when he gave me Jesus, that in his love for me, because he so loved me, he so loved me as part of the world that he gave his son, that in that is everything I need. If he would yeah. give up his only son, then he has given me every single thing that I will ever need in any situation. Yeah. So when that doctor tells me whatever, when my body tells me whatever, I say, Lord, and, and I've gotten to a point at times, you guys, where I've even just said, just, Lord, I thank you that you're, you, you love me. I thank you for your love for me. Your love has already provided the answer that the doctors don't have the answer to. Yeah. Your love has already gone beyond. And again, I was saying, let's go to 1 Corinthians 3, or excuse me, Ephesians 3, Ephesians chapter 3. Because the Bible is talking about, we talked about it last week, mm -hmm. about how the love of God goes beyond knowledge. It says in Ephesians 3.18, let me get there. See, what, what we're doing, guys, is we're flushing you out. We're flushing out the, the fear and the doubt. You know, when you, when you take a a dirty glass of water and you put it under the faucet where clear where clean water only right. is being poured into it eventually that dirt comes out of the glass and all you have remaining is clean drinking water right. and right now what we're doing by just going over this every week is we're flushing you out 
we all need to do a cleanse every once in a while and we're just cleansing the toxicity, the doubt and the unbelief and the fear. We're driving it out um, with the love of God. It says that perfect love casts out fear. And so you could think of it as when you have that glass of fear, the love is being poured into it and is washing out the fear mm -hmm. so that faith has the proper environment to actually blossom in. Right. So that's why, why we keep hammering this love because we got to get this cavity out of our tooth and we got to, we got to create the proper environment. So that's what we're doing. We're flushing it out. But love enduring all things, you guys, God is love. So you got to keep in mind that when you read about love, love is God and God is love. Mm -hmm. So God can endure all things. So how do you apply that to your life? How do you apply to your life that God endures all things? Everything that has come my way, everything that right now, again, this is a healing page. So whatever is going on in your body or the body of a relative of yours that you know, your husband, your spouse, whoever, your child, whatever. The love of God, God endures all things. So whatever it is, it's not greater than God. Right. So whatever it is, God can bear up under whatever that is. The stripes of Jesus, the cross of Jesus, what I'm trying to say is, his love for you, there, whatever has come against you is no match for his love for you. Put it that way. Whatever has come against you. Stage five renal failure, that was me. Stage five, you guys. After that, they just call it end stage. So I had been an end stage renal failure. End stage. We're, we're done with stages. We don't have any more stages. We're just done with stages. The love of God, and same with heart failure. The love of God okay, um, went beyond, it goes beyond the realm of man's knowledge. So that's what we're trying to get you guys to recognize. And in Ephesians 3 chapter, chapter, um, chapter 18, or excuse me, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 18, 19, and 20, again, just to recap, it says that we may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breath after we're, after we're rooted and grounded in love, that is. Verse 17, after we're rooted and grounded in love, we're able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breath, the length, the height, and the depth, okay, of God, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. So I just want to remind us, and then Herman can, can lead us into some other areas, but I wanted to remind us that the love of God passes knowledge. So again, we can't, within the realms of knowledge, we can't put God in the box of, we can't understand who God is within the realms of knowledge. So meaning when the doctors have told you that there is no hope for you, that's within the realm of his knowledge. Mm -hmm. When the doctors have said there's no cure, when the doctors have said there's no treatment, that you only have so many months to live, that you'll deal with these symptoms for the rest of your life, that it's just gonna be this way, that the best they can do is give you some medication that can take away the pain or dull the pain a little bit because this is the end for you. That is the scope of man's knowledge. That's the entire scope of what he knows what to do for you. That's right. it, that's all he knows. But this says that the love of Christ passes knowledge, you guys. And we were stressing last week that that's the realm that we need to be operating in. We need to be operating in the realm that is beyond the knowledge. There is a realm outside of knowledge. And that's what Herman and I have started tapping into. The exceedingly abundantly above, which is what verse 20 is saying, that he's able to do. Right. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think all of knowledge, what you ask or think is another way of saying that is knowledge. Yeah. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all of knowledge. Well, he's able to do that within his love, within right. the realm of his right. love, not in the realm of your knowledge, mm -hmm. not in the realm of, of the knowledge of doctors so-and-so, right. of the medical institutions of so-and-so, mm -hmm. of the Mayo Clinic. Okay, that's within the realms of knowledge. He's able to do what he can only do 
right. in the realm of his love. And that's exceedingly abundantly above all of man's knowledge. Yeah. Remember what I said last week is just a really good analogy for me. I won't speak for you all, but again, you know, if I'm standing on top of my roof, looking at my circumstances, there's only certain things that I can see. But if I were to get on top of a tall building that went way beyond the, the height of my rooftop, I now can see, excuse me, I bit my tongue. I can now see further beyond what I could see just standing on top of my, my own home. Right. And you can see so much further. You can see hope. Right. When you're standing on top of God's tower of love, Amen. you can see hope. Right. So maybe you got all this going on right here, but if you keep your eyes focused on what's right here, you can't see hope. So you got you to gotta climb up on top of, you know, his shoulders and, and look out and like, there it is. Amen. There it is. There's my answer. Somebody had just uh, sent a message and said that I lost hope in prayer. Hmm. And that's just, I'm, so, I, I'm sorry to hear that because God answers prayer. But it's, God does answer prayer, but you know what? He's already answered prayer. Right. Meaning, he's already given us all things in Christ Jesus. You have everything that you need is on the inside of you. Is what are you going to access? And you got to keep in mind, too, that if you are praying to victory, then you're not praying from the place of victory. And from a place of faith. And from a place of faith. Because faith says, Lord, I thank you that because you love me, I, and then you pray your prayer. It's from the understanding of his love for you. It's from the understanding that he's already provided for you. So all you have to do is ask. But when you are praying, not with the understanding of what we're talking about here, of a revelation of his love for you, then you're almost praying with your fingers crossed behind your back yeah. kind of thing. It's yeah. almost like you're praying like, I don't know if you're really going to do this for me because I don't actually trust your love for me. Right. When you pray from the understanding that he loves you, when a child comes to the parent knowing that the parent loves them, you know, what I'm it's like, it's not a, it's not with trepidation and it's not like I hope I'll get mm -hmm. fed and I'll hope. And pertaining to healing, the Bible says that healing is a children's bread. Right. So it's almost like withholding food from your child. Yeah. This isn't like a toy that, you know, or something. This is just basic stuff. Yeah. Food. This is just the children's bread. This is just like a given. Right. This is something that God would never withhold from you. This is like a no-brainer. Yeah. So the thing is, is that approaching prayer from the standpoint of it already being done and his love for you makes all the difference in the world to whether or not you feel hopeful as you're even uttering your prayer or whether or not you're losing hope. Yeah, but what, you know, think of it like this. And we've talked about this uh, a few uh, broadcasts ago, just where, just think you, you're about to adopt a child, okay? You, you know, you, you, you prepared his room or her room and you, you bought toys and you have all these different things for her to enjoy. You got a trampoline in the backyard and, and you got a re refrigerator full of food and, you know, you've, you've done all the preparation to bring this child home. And so when they get home, they get to your house and they're kind of shy because they, they just don't know, you know, how much they can trust you. You know what I mean? Okay. So maybe they just go sit on the couch, you know, and they just kind of look around and, and you're like, well, I got all this stuff for you to do. Go, go play with right. your toys. And, and, it's not, and, and it's not up to the parents to answer the child's request because the parents have already provided good. everything for them. That's good. Now it's about the child mm. trusting the parent. Mm -hmm. As I trust their love, I'm now going to start accessing mm -hmm. the things that have been provided. For mm -hmm. Exactly. What's behind that door? You're going to, you're going to rest. First of all, you're going to start resting in your new environment. Yeah. You're going to relax. Yes. It's not going to be just, can I open the refrigerator? Can I go to the, can I please right. go to the bathroom? Right. Can I please, you're going to lay back and recline. 
and you're gonna put prop your feet up and you're gonna just lay across the yeah. couch. You're gonna start being comfortable in this love. Right. And then from there you're gonna say, you know what, I'm hungry. And I they said there were snacks. Where are the snacks? Or you might just you might just, you know, maybe they have a maid and you're just like, Maid, give me the snacks. You know? But hey, you wouldn't have done that when you first got there, but now you settled you spent in. some time mm -hmm. with him. Now you trust his love for you. And so now you're 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 moving with a lot more freedom. Right. And like you said, you're able to explore. Right. Are you do you trust God's love for you enough to start exploring oh, man, you his guys. kingdom? Man, you guys seriously say that say that again. Do you trust <laughs> God? I'm gonna be like diamond and silk. Yeah. Uh-huh. Amen. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Preach <So>, brother. <laughs> Do you trust God's love enough for you to start exploring his kingdom and start to place a demand Amen. on what has already been provided for you? Amen. Again, God isn't, this is one of the great things we got from going to Karis Bible College. God isn't doing anything else for you. Mm. Okay? You might be sick. You might be broke. You might need just you know, relationships repaired and you're like waiting like at the bus stop, like, okay, God, when you, when you showing up, God has already come shown up bus full of gas. God's got <laughs> everything ready for you. There's nothing for him to do. Amen. Jesus said it was finished. Amen. And when he said it was finished, that's because it was done. There's nothing else. Now it's all about what are we going to believe? What are we going to access uh, that has been provided for us right. already in us. Right. So look, everything that you need is already been placed inside of you. Remember, the, the the what you're seeing right now, you're you're looking at our flesh. We live inside of this flesh right. body. The real us is inside of here, and that person, the real you, has everything you could ever need or want. Now it's for me to pull that thing out. Amen. And and, and but but you know what, you guys. Like what Herman said, it, it, there's no more that that parent, back to that example of that child, that adopted child or whatever, yeah. there's no more that that parent can do. He's hoping that the child will start to explore and be comfortable and just relax yeah. in his love for them. But you can't make them do it. Right. But you can, you, you can prepare exactly. everything. And you the can, kid can be sitting around saying, hey, I'm hungry. Hey, I'm hungry. You have a refrigerator full of food. Go eat it. He's waiting for the parent to answer his request. And the request mm. has already been met. Mm. Get up and, and go, go eat. and get it. Amen. And you know what, you guys? In Ephesians 3.19, it says, And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Yeah. It's like God has stacked all the cupboards full. Mm -hmm. But... Without you understanding and relaxing and exploring and settling into his love for you, mm -hmm. you won't experience that fullness. Yeah. The cupboards are loaded. The fridge is loaded. There are levels and layers and dimensions of who God is that he wants to reveal to you. But it can't be revealed within your understanding, your scope of knowledge you have to step out into his realm of love, okay? They said I'm, uh, okay, I know I may be adopted, but they said I'm theirs. So I should be able to go open the fridge and go get myself something to eat. So I'm hungry, I'm gonna go get myself something to eat. As you begin to settle in his love for you and rest and recline and explore, you begin to make everything that he's made available to you your own. That's how you access it. It's not that he puts a feeling over on. He can't do any more for you than what he's done for you. He's loaded the covers. He said that he's loved you. He's given his son. He's made every provision available for you. But you have to now get up and say, okay, I am going to make a demand on the love provision that he's made for me. I'm going to go open up the cabinets and I'm going to see what he has for me. I'm going to see all the goodies that he has for me. That's basically what this love thing is all about. People are wanting a feeling and emotion. What more can God do for you other than prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies? He prepared a lavish table before mm -hmm. you. 
He's prepared it before you. So guess what? What's implied is that now you can eat right in the face of your enemy. Your enemy doesn't have to go away for you to eat. The, your enemy is watching you eat of the table. Okay? So the thing is, eat. The thing is, go explore. Go explore in this love. Relax in this love. Recline in this love. And until you do that, as it says in Ephesians, you can't be filled with all the fullness. Right. Yes, you have his spirit inside of you. Yes, his spirit is inside of you. But the thing is, is that God is so multi-layered. He's so multi-dimensional. He wants to do so much in you mm -hmm. beyond what you've been able to even fathom right. is what he wants to do in you. But he can't do it until you are just confident. confident that he loves you. Yeah. You know, there was a young lady, and I, I didn't catch her name, but she was saying, she was like, you know, what do you mean I, I have all things in me? And, and what I'm saying is that you are, you are not flesh and blood. You are a spirit. That is the real you. And God is spirit. God recreated your spirit, man. You've become now one with the Father, with the Son, and in Romans 8, 32, it says, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not along with him give us all things? All things are in Christ Jesus, and Christ Jesus is in you. So you have all things mm -hmm. already inside of you. Again, the house is stopped. Now it's about trusting his love for me now I'm going to start moving on those things. Yeah. I'm going to start demanding those things. So like I told you, when I wake up in the morning, and I say, God, thank you for loving me. Man, I thank you that you just love me so much. That gets me fired up. And now when I start thinking about the promises in the Bible, mm -hmm. now, I'm, now I'm like, that's mine. Right. Give me my stuff. Right. You know, when, when life doesn't look like the promises of God, then, you know, like, like we were saying before, you know, when you go work at a job and, and it's payday and there's no check for you, there's a problem. Right. You know, right. Houston, we have a problem. Yeah. Because I know I work and I'm owed. There's a debt. And see, if you don't know that you are owed, you'll, you'll, you'll settle yeah. for sickness. You you'll will. settle for just having lack. You will. We settle for a life that we're not called to, a life outside of the blessing. We actually settle for the curse. Remember, I, I keep telling you guys that, well, not that I keep telling you, like, you know, I'm just sharing with you guys, just in Deuteronomy 28, all of those blessings that cover the fruit of your body and, and your business is being blessed. And you're blessed when you come and when you go. And when enemies come at you, they'll flee seven ways. And all these different things were, were a part of the blessing for the people who could perform. Right who could perfectly perform, but guess what? The only one who was able to perfectly perform was Jesus. Jesus is owed those blessings. Amen. He earned them. And you are it was a him. debt to him. Amen. And guess what? Even though your life has not been perfect, you're perfect in him. Amen. So the real you who was created in Christ Jesus are owed that blessing. It's a debt to you through him. So if your life doesn't look like what's, what's outlined in Deuteronomy 28, then you ought to be uncomfortable because there, there is a, a crime almost going <laughs> on where you are owed this and, and you need to go get what you're owed. And you, you, you know, we'll, we'll just settle back and settle in. It's like, okay, I'm just cool in this lack and everything. All right. You can't get cool with the curse. He said that we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. We have been redeemed. We have been plucked out of the bucket of curse. Amen. And we've been put at the table of righteousness in Christ Jesus, seated right next to the Father. That is where you're seated. If you have said yes to Jesus, you are seated with him next to the Father. Amen. That is only a seat, a, a sign for a righteous person. Amen. You have been made righteous through him. Amen. 
You are no long, longer a slug, a lowly slug that, you know, God doesn't have any value Amen. for and whatever. No, no, he came and paid a price. If you don't, that's why it says that we have to be, that, that the sin has to be washed away from our consciousness. Our conscience has to be, has to be purged. Yeah, you got to get rid of, it's not just good he enough for, for you to be able to say, yeah, Jesus paid the price for my sin. No, you got to get this thing out of your head. Because as long as guilt and shame is in your head, you are not going to receive or access what is promised to you in Scripture. We must get this. Amen. 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 I probably interrupted you. No, you probably no, saying you're something. Good. I just so, want to say oh, right Oh, in the wait a minute. So I remember now. Okay. That's one of your moves. No, I was just going to say just to um, share. Even right now, oh, we're not yes. finished yet. Share, share, share the guys. broadcast. Share the and broadcast. And remember to subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe when on YouTube. done with this. But that, I was saying all that to say to that young lady, you know, just what is, how do I, you know, what do you mean it's all in me? That's what I mean. That your spirit man is full of everything you need. Your spirit man has every answer that you need. The Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. He says that he's there to guide you, to lead you, to counsel you, to bring things to your remembrance. I mean, the Holy Spirit is right there. I mean, that's a whole other subject for another time. That's a, that's a lot of meat on that bone. But we have to start leaning on the Holy Spirit that's as how, the guide. And, and another person asked, how do I go get it? And I don't remember, and I'm assuming that's what he's talking about, just when we talk about appropriating the promises of God is what I'm thinking he was referring to. But like you said, it's a leaning on it. It's, it's making a demand. I don't, I'm, I'm using that word, but maybe that's not as clear, but I don't know. What was that Michael Jackson video where he stepped and everywhere he stepped, it lit up. What was that video? Have you guys seen that Michael I Jackson see the, video? I see the beat of the Billie Jean. I, can't I think, think it's Billie Jean or, or something, but you know where he's stepping on the lights and then every time he steps the light is lighting up though that's the way i look at it <laughs> when i talk about making a demand it's like i am going to step i'm not waiting for the light to be illuminated i'm not waiting for the symptom to be gone i'm not waiting for the yeah. doc my lab reports to say that i'm healed before I make a decision that I'm healed to take a step. before I make a decision to take a step. I am demanding and I'm make a re making a requirement on the fact that the love of God has already gone before me. The love of God knew I was going to be in this situation. Yes. The love of God knew that the enemy was going to co come and try to attack me in this area. Yeah. But nevertheless, the love of God has gone before me and the love of God is saying, just trust me. I'm already here. Right. I already created you. I know every part of your body. I know every intricate part of who you are. I've already created you. I've already gone before you. I knew the dilemma of sin. I knew that because of sin, sickness would come into the world. And I already made a provision for you. Trust me. Yeah. Will you trust me? And we're saying, I trust you, but fix it first. And after you then fix it, you. then I'll step out and then I'll whatever. No, no, no. He said, trust me. I've already gone before you. Yeah. So just like Michael Jackson in that video, before he steps, right when he steps down, it, the platform is there. It's like stepping into nothing where it looks like nothing, but as soon as you step, the ground Something. is underneath you. Yeah. That's what making a demand on the love of God is. It's saying, Lord, you are there. I may not be able to see how you're going to work this out. I may not be able to see how, you know, when the doctor said this and when my body is saying this and when I feel this, how this could ever turn around, but you love me and your love has gone before me and I am making a demand on your love to meet me right here and right now. So in Jesus name, whatever it is that you're believing God for, you start taking steps. You start having expectation in that area. That's what it means to start literally walking by faith. It's trusting in his love for you. Yeah. And whatever desires that come forth out of a revelation of his love for you, you know, for me, it was, I'm yeah. not having a heart, uh, I mean, a, a heart attack. I'm not having a heart transplant and Lord, show me how to eat. Like I said, my body had gotten to the place where it was, I think, slowly preparing for death where I wasn't really consuming food. 
I was losing weight. I was extremely weak. I had no energy. I was sleeping at all times of the day. I was just kind of curling up in a ball slowly in a slow sense of like preparing for death. My brain had, had shut off the mechanism for, for food, life. for eating, for life that just says you're hungry, eat, you know, whatever. I wasn't going to the bathroom. I could hardly breathe. I couldn't eat. I had no energy. I had low uh, um, immunity. I had a low uh, right red blood cell count. I mean, everything was just low. So I had to literally say, no, Lord, you, you knew that you, you've made provision for me. I just have to recognize the provision for me. And so I show me, Lord, yeah. show me. I started expecting the Holy Spirit to show up and do what he was supposed to do. Many of you guys are not placing a demand on the Holy Spirit to do his job. He is your helper. He is your counselor. Ask for help. He is your peace. <laughs> he, he guides you into all truth. He shows you things to come. Mm -hmm. he, so I needed him to guide me into the truth of, okay, I know I need to eat. You created the body to eat, Lord. But if my brain is trying to tell my body that it's not hungry and mm -hmm. that I'm not eating and I had not eaten in so long, just the smell of food, much less putting food down my throat. So the Holy Spirit was going to have to rewire my brain to, but let, guess what? I wasn't expecting a feeling of, ooh, I'm so hungry to decide to eat. I didn't expect a feeling, an overwhelming feeling right. of just an appetite. Yeah. I made an appetite. Yeah, you didn't have an appetite. I didn't have an appetite. So I wasn't it. waiting for, so what yeah. I'm saying is I think some people may be waiting for like a, a feeling of, you know, how do I appropriate it step by, out. by stepping out, but stepping out with that revelation. It's yeah. not just a stepping out to step out. Yeah, it's not taking your glasses off and go for a drive and saying, oh, I'm healed. It's, you know? it's, 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 no, 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 wait a minute. It, it's me getting a grip and wet recognizing, wait a minute, no, no, no. He has already provided yeah. for me. He has gone before me in his love for me and he has already provided for me. So father, I thank you for showing me. And it wasn't a, I'm just going to jump out and eat anything. Cause okay, if I'm going to eat, I'm going to eat this or I'm going to, no, no, no. Holy spirit. What should I eat? Holy spirit. I was leaning into him to reveal to me and to show me what could I eat? How could I eat it? Mm -hmm. How could I eat it? I'm, I'm, I'm going to drink this food right now. This is what I got right now. I don't need to engage my jaw. I don't need to engage saliva, my saliva again, saliva again. I need to drink this thing right now to just get some calories. Okay, so what can I almost drink? Oh, I can drink cream of wheat pretty much. I can kind of slurp it up. <laughs> You know, what I'm saying is the Holy Spirit will tell you every little detail if you expect him to and you make a demand and you lean into him to be who he said he would be to you. You know, I want to say this, that when we're talking about love and we're talking about hope and some of you saying, man, I, I, I've lost hope and we're talking about faith. Love is the starting point. Love is where you start. Now, when you... When, when love is revealed to you, now when I read the word, I see something promised. Okay? I see the promise of by his stripes I'm healed. And now because I have that hope based on the fact that he loves me, he won't lie. When somebody loves you, they won't lie to you. So when, when you find out that God loves you, now when he says that you're healed, you believe it. You have hope. There's a picture. You can see yourself running down the street or doing the things that you know your your body's supposed to be able to do. That that word breathes life into you, just like the doctor's word has breathed life into you when he says cancer or whatever. And you're just and you start saying death. I mean, you know, you got right. a whole movie being played when God says no, live. You will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. See, that's a promise, and that promise, boom, it explodes in your heart because you, you, you receive it as a personal uh, uh, promise to you, and now there's hope. There's hope. God is saying, no, you're not going to die. You're going to live. Mm -hmm. It's like, yes, I am going to live because the one who just told me that loves me, and he won't lie to me, and now I'm willing to step out Amen. in faith based on the hope which is based on his love. And now I'm eating the fruit because I can't just sit still. 
The one who told me that he loved me and shared with, with me how much he loved me gave me a promise, and now I'm acting on that promise. And here in Hebrews Amen. 6, Hebrews 6, 19, it says, this hope that we have is an anchor. Mm. An anchor, but listen to where the anchor is connected to. You know, when a ship drops an anchor into the ocean, you know, it, it can get stuck on a some kind of object at the bottom of the ocean or in the sand or whatever. And, and you know, the, the even though the waves are blowing around, it might be a storm, but I'm anchored. So Amen. the boat's not going anywhere. And some of you guys are doing this. Right. And it's like, oh my goodness. And you're being blown and tossed all over the place. No, he says his hope is an anchor. Mm. And the anchor goes behind the veil. Angles. Anchor of the soul. The anchor of your soul. Doesn't it's sure. Like yes, it's the anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast which goes beyond or behind the veil. What was behind the veil? It was the very presence of God that was behind the veil. That guess what? When Jesus died, that veil was torn in half. And so now the presence of God wasn't just behind a veil that only a high priest could go to once a year. Now my very hope Amen. is anchored into his presence. Oh my man, I just got so chills. you guys. So hope the, is not just a uh, hope is spiritual. The presence okay. of God. Your Have you hope, thought about that? <laughs> hope the, is spiritual. The, the the hope that you get, the promises of God for your life, are anchored to the very presence of God. Amen. That anchor cannot come out. It's stuck. It's in there tight. But the thing is, is that you have to access it by faith. You got to access it by faith. So when you talk about hope, remember, it's the love that you got to get. But then when somebody, you know, when you tell me that you're going to do something for me, man, that fills me with all kind of hope. That gives me all kind of goosebumps and, and a picture of us doing whatever it is that you said, because I know you're not going to tell me that you're going to do something that you, you don't do because I know you love me. So I got hope. And now I'm getting ready. When you say, babe, I'm taking you on a trip. Oh, hallelujah. Where are we going? Get get your golf clubs. Oh, my goodness. I'm not just getting my I'm golf speaking clubs. His language, I'm, I'm getting some new golf clubs. <laughs> and I'm going to shine them up. And I'm getting ready. I'm making plans. Why am I doing all that? Because love spoke to me. And when you know God loves you, his word will start speaking to you. And you'll start acting in faith. You'll start taking those steps of faith based on the promise. But the promise came from somebody who loves me. And that's what got me all jacked up now. <laughs> and I can't sit still. I can't lay in the bed anymore curled up like, right. a, like a bun. Right. You know, just, just like an a <laughs> unbuttered roll, just dry. And just, you know, I'm not making fun either. I'm just saying you, this, this love, you guys, this love will roll. get you just excited. And you'll be up and out in no time. But that's what you got to get. That's why this love thing is so important. Because the Bible is no longer a book. The Bible is now a promise and it's, it's personal. Amen. It's directed to you. We read the Bible like a book. We read about all these people, these different experiences and, and this and that. And no, the Bible is a love letter Amen. personally written to you. So when you, when you get the love letter, you get excited. I said it before. If I just found a random love letter that wasn't directed That's towards true. me, it doesn't matter what the love letter said that he was or she was going to do. It's not addressed to me. So it, it does nothing for me. It doesn't stimulate hope in me. Right. It would stimulate hope. And who the love was directed towards. Right. So when God says that I love you and here's a promise to you, now you can get excited. Mm. And the word of God, it's a personal letter, a love letter from God. And that's, full of promise. And that's, the, and that's so good. And you know what, you guys? That's where, you, I, honestly, we've been missing it. That's not that there no, are wait, other... No, wait a minute, babe. Hang on to that. Because Jenny right now is saying, so when we pray and stand, do we still say, if it's your will? No. No, 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 no Jenny. It I'm is his will. That. It is his will. Yeah, because no, guess you don't what? say that. It, if I already did something for you, okay, Jenny, if, I, if, if, if you needed $100 and I already gave the $100, is it my will to give you the $100? Right. Of course it is. I gave it all to you already. God is, again, already giving you everything mm. in your spirit, man. So it is his will for you to be blessed. 
in your body. It's his will for you to be blessed in your finances, blessed in your relationship, blessed when you come and go. Mm. Everything you put your hands to prospers. Is it his will for you to prosper? Yes. That's what the whole thing was about. That's why he came and died for you. That's why he got up on the cross for you. That's why he knelt right. down at the whipping post for you and took the stripes on his back for you. What do you mean? Is it his will? Oh my, yes. Yes, it is his will. He's saying that in love, Jim. Yes, He's I just am. He's passionate. He's not it mad. It is his will. <laughs> He's not mad. If you are saying, if it's your will, if that is your prayer, if that is the basis of your prayer, Lord, help me. If it's your will, that is a prayer that's going nowhere. I, we've heard it said before that you can't have faith, that faith begins where the will of God is known. Faith begins where the will of God is yeah. known. You can't have faith. And believe that he will actually answer your prayer, your request, if you don't even know if it's his will to answer your request. Do you Remember. see what I'm saying? So you're almost in a catch-22 where you're asking for something, but you don't even know if it's his will to answer it. So in you asking, you can't even have faith that he's going to answer it. Remember so faith. therefore, Remember you, have to, you have to know that it is his will. Yes. And anything that he has already promised is automatically his will. Right. You have to remember he's faith already promised that calls it's his will. those things that be not as though they were. We call those things done. Yes. Because N Nicole Mitchell, if it's in his word, it is his will. That yes. is his, his will. word is his will. Yes. So, yes. so, so by no, his stripes, great. you were healed. It's in the will. It's, it's in the will. It's yeah. like what, what do it's, I what do yeah. I have? Yeah, that's okay. Good. Thank so you, it's Nicole. like yeah, when a when a parent dies and he leaves a will, oh uh, okay, what whoever's in the will and it says that this person gets this right, then it's yours. It's so, in the will. So you don't have to say, well, did Grandma really want me to have that? When it says I want Jenny to have the, the house, <laughs> the house, and it's like, did 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 she really? Well, that was what. The grandma's words were right. Her words were, "I want Jenny to have the house." But Jenny comes back, and Jenny says, "Well, but is it his will that I? Is it grandma's will that I have the house?" Well, her words written to you were, "I want Jenny to have the house." Right. So, grandma's words is grandma's will. Right. Okay. And They're the Bible, one and the same. The Bible is his will, and is written to you. Amen. See everything. You know, typically when you have a will. You know, it's like this is this is for this person and this is for that person. And, you know, you no, the whole will is yours. Everything in that word, every promise in the Bible belongs to you. So, Jenny, we love you. I don't want yes, you to. I was just I just got <laughs> pumped up. <laughs> we just, love you, girl. You know what? I just want I just want to wash <laughs> that yes, thing out. It is God's will. You don't have to ever pray if it be thy will. People that pray if it be thy will prayers are never in faith. Yeah, ever. Exactly. They're not in faith. And remember, the, oh, I can't remember exactly who was it that asked Jesus, if it's your will, I'm lost. But there was, there was a guy in the Bible. Oh, I can't if think he of, will heal yeah. him. It was, a, it was someone that wanted to be healed. And he said, I will. Yeah. Um, I forgot I who that was. But, but yeah. But the point is, is that it's not just he's willing. It's who he is. Right. How, so if you're, if you're believing God for healing... How can you ask God if it's his will when it's actually who he is? It's his character. Right. It's his nature. nature. He can't be anything but willing to heal. Right. To because deliver, he to prosper. Because he is healing. Exactly. Again, he can't, he, he doesn't just love, he is love. So he is your healing. He's your healer. He, you know, healing comes from him. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. yeah. Can't make it any more clear than that. So. Anyway, guys, I got fired up. Again, it wasn't anything, per, I'm not upset at you or anything like that. I just got fired up for a minute. But um, remember, next week, this the, this the broadcast for Healing Journey today is going to be on YouTube Live. YouTube Live. Healing Journeys Today YouTube page subscribe gotta hit the subscribe button and then you'll get notifications when we're going live all throughout the week remember all of the um the lineup for healing journeys today uh monday through sunday is all posted on the facebook page if you just scroll back up to the top of the facebook page you'll see the whole lineup 
Got a lot of great teaching, a lot of great information. Man, there's just so much I want to say right now, but I can't. <laughs> I just, ooh, uh, just want to say it, but I can't because it'll take me down another path. Share this message. Share this broadcast. Share this broadcast because you broadcast. never know who yes. this, what, who's going to be blessed as a result of this. Maybe it didn't move you at all, but right. man, somebody is that you know really needs to hear this. But anyway... We love you guys. Yep. We so appreciate remember, you. And, and one more time, I just yep. want to say, starting next Sunday, next Sunday, you guys, we will not be live on Healing Journeys Today Facebook. We will be live oh, instead on the Healing Journeys Today YouTube. So I encourage you, as soon as we're done with here, which is basically right now, yes. go to Healing Journeys Today YouTube. Yes. And, and hit, so, the hit the subscribe button. You'll be yes. notified when we go live. We'll be up on there on the 31st next week, Sunday yes. at 9 a.m. Pacific. And everyone else who is in the lineup for the rest of the week will be on the YouTube channel. Yes. Okay. As well. Not just us. Everybody. This whole thing is moving to YouTube. And then we will come back and post the recorded versions that were filmed live on YouTube on to the healing journey so you can still come back and look at the healing journeys today facebook page yeah. but we will not be live next week and one one more on thing what facebook was, what was what were the dates for sophia sophia life? is going to be ministering and having a soaking worship session so she's going to take you guys into the presence of the lord she's just going to take you there and she can take you there so she's going to take you into the presence of the lord sunday or excuse me thursday 5 28 at 4 p.m so that's this, this coming thursday, thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific time, it's going to be live, a soaking worship session, and I believe that's going to be on the YouTube channel as well. Yeah, so that's 4 p.m. 4 Pacific, PM Pacific. That's 7 p.m. East Eastern. Coast. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can fill in all the rest. And so then around the world, I can't even help you figure You got to figure that out. You're so on your own. like, subscribe, share, follow us on our Instagram at Healing Journeys Today. Yeah. And you guys, again, we thank you guys for being a part of yes. what we are doing. Yes. Um, we are receiving testimony. And if you have testimonies, also, please post those. Yeah. Post them on the YouTube if, or in the comment section. Post them on here, the Healing Journeys Today. Yeah. If you're noticing things, if the Lord is speaking to you, it revealing revelation. things, revelation, let us know. anything, let us know. It encourages us. We yeah. want to be an encouragement to you all. And thank you all and bless you all so very yeah. much. That's it. That's it. I love you. <laughs> love you.